This is Talk Accolade Global News Update. I am Abiodun Mohamed. Russia reported fierce fighting on Sunday on three sections of the front line in Ukraine, while Ukraine's president praised his troops for repelling enemy advances and said their counter-offensive was progressing well. The assessment of action along the 1,000-kilometer-long front were made a day after an African peace mission wrapped up talks with Russian President Vladimir Putin. The mission failed to spark enthusiasm from either Moscow or Kiev. The United Nations meanwhile accused Moscow of failing to allow it to provide assistance to Russian-controlled areas of Ukraine affected by the breach of a big power dam that flooded vast areas of land and left thousands homeless. A Russian-installed official said Ukraine had recaptured Piatikatki, a village in the southern Zaporizhia region, and were entrenching themselves there while coming under fire from Russian artillery. Russia's defense ministry made no mention of Piatikatki in its daily update in which it said its forces had repelled Ukrainian attacks in three sections of the front line. Russia's Vostok group of forces said Ukraine had failed to take the settlement. The evening report by the general staff of Ukraine's armed forces also made no mention of Piatikatki. Last week, Ukraine said it had recaptured a nearby settlement, Lubkovi, and villages further east in the Donetsk region at the start of its counter-offensive. Israeli forces have raided the Jenin refugee camp, killing three Palestinians and wounding at least 37. One of the Palestinians killed is a minor. The Palestinian Ministry of Health has identified the victims as Khaled Darwish, 21, Qasem Saria, 19, and Ahmed Sakhr, 15. The Palestinian Ministry of Health has reported that the number of people injured during the morning Israeli raid on Jenin in the occupied West Bank has reached 37. It added that 10 of those wounded were in critical condition. It confirmed that three people had been killed, including a 15-year-old child named Ahmed Sakhr, a Palestinian journalist, Azim Nasser, the cameraman for Al Ghat TV channel, reporting from Jenin, said the situation was escalating quickly in the occupied West Bank city. He explained that journalists, civilians, and medics were all being targeted by Israeli forces. The Israeli military said in a statement that it had used helicopters to shoot at alleged gunmen in Jenin. At least six people have been killed and dozens injured in a spate of weekend shootings and violence across the United States. The shootings took place in suburban Chicago, Washington State, Central Pennsylvania, St. Louis, Southern California, and Baltimore. At least 23 people were shot, one fatally, early on Sunday in the suburban Chicago car park where hundreds had gathered to celebrate Juneteenth, an annual commemoration marking the emancipation of African-American slaves. The DuPage County Sheriff's Office described the incident as a peaceful gathering that suddenly turned violent as a number of people fired multiple shots into the crowd in Willowbrook, Illinois, about 32 kilometers southwest of Chicago. Two people were killed and two injured when an attacker began firing randomly into a crowd at a campground in Grant County, Washington State, where many people were staying to attend a music festival on Saturday night. Police said the suspect was shot in a confrontation with law enforcement officers and taken into custody hundreds of meters from the Beyond Wonderland Electronic Dance Music Festival. One state trooper was killed and another critically wounded just hours apart in central Pennsylvania on Saturday after a gunman attacked a state police barrack. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is set to meet with Chinese President Xi Jinping on Monday, wrapping up a rare and pivotal trip to Beijing that aimed at ensuring the many disputes between the superpowers did not spiral into conflict. Blinken's meeting with Xi on the final day of his two-day visit will be the first time a U.S. Secretary of State has met the Chinese leader since 2018, and it could help to facilitate the summit between Xi and U.S. President Joe Biden later in the year. Marking the first visit to China by a U.S. Secretary of State in five years, Blinken held extensive discussions with China's top diplomat Wang Yi on Monday and Foreign Minister King Gang on Sunday. The talks held at the Diaoyu Thai State Guest House in Beijing did not appear to make such progress in bridging the two sides' differences on issues ranging from Taiwan to trade, human rights, stemming the flu of synthetic opioid fentanyl, or their approach to the war in Ukraine. Describing the U.S.-China relationship as being at a low point, Wang said the root cause was the United States' wrong perception of China. Blinken underscored the importance of open communication channels to manage their competition during more than three hours of talks with Wang. The State Department said, calling their conversation as productive.
North Korea has said its botched military satellite launch last month was the, in quote, grievous failure at the ruling party's latest key meeting. State media, KCNA, reported on Monday the enlarged plenary meeting was held between Friday and Sunday, ordering workers and researchers to analyze the failed military satellite launch and prepare for another in the near future. Those in charge of the satellite launch were heavily criticized, the report said. It marked the eighth enlarged plenary meeting of the eighth Central Committee of the Workers' Party of Korea, WPK, the country's ruling party. The North Korean rocket plunged into the sea after losing trust due to the abnormal starting of the second stage engine, Pyongyang said after the launch failure in an unusually candid admission of a technical problem. North Korea also vowed it will continue to develop its nuclear capability and strengthen solidarity with other countries that oppose what it called the U.S. strategy for world supremacy. The meeting also discussed ensuring self-sufficiency in food supply by increasing the country's agricultural output and meeting the annual grain production target. Earlier this year, South Korea's Unification Ministry said the food situation in the North seemed to have deteriorated. That is the size of top accolade global news updates. You can follow us on our social media platforms as displayed on your screen. Happy New Week!